Hi guys. Well, anyone watching my channel knows that the other day I did a quick unboxing of the Xbox One Elite controller. Now what I want to do today is have a quick look at the software. So, if you look on here, I've already got it loaded up. Obviously normally you would go into My Games and Apps and scroll along until you see Xbox Accessories. That's what you want. And that's where you will find the software. And there you go, there it is. Now you can see on this graphic here that there's a slightly different layout on this controller. Just below what used to be the start and back buttons, I can never remember what they call them now, is a little switch and that allows you to have two stored configurations, but we'll get into that later. Right, so you've got two options here, configure and more options. Obviously what I'm going to look at first is more options and that gives you two more menus, explore which doesn't do a lot, just gives you this. I don't know if there's going to be more there later on, I don't know. Below Explore, you've got Name. That just allows you to rename your controller. And that's it for more options. And then we get into the meat of the product itself, and that's Configure. Now, under Configure, you'll see Slot 1 and Slot 2. And they correspond to what I was talking to, talking about just a minute ago. The little toggle switch on the controller itself. Now if you watch now as I toggle it, you'll see it will move across on the graphic on the screen. There you go. Now what that does is it allows you to store two configurations on the controller itself. You can have as many configurations as you like, but you can only store two on the controller and you can actually change those on the fly within game. So for instance, I don't know, you might be playing a game that involves having a sniper and you could have a, a configuration set up specifically for sniper and you could flick across to it. That seems a lot of hassle to me and kind of bordering on cheating if you ask me, but it's possible. So that's what the two configurations offer you. And if you go down here, these are configurations that have already been loaded up and I presume there will be more of these as time goes on. These you don't have to create yourself, they're just configurations that were loaded already. And any of these, if you click on one, say that one, I can save that to slot one or I can save it to, save it to slot two and that will put the configuration on the onto one of those toggle switches, one of those options. So as well as having pre-laid out configurations, you can also create your own. So you've got new configuration, pretty much speaks for itself. You can go in there and you can create a new configuration. So click on that. Now the default name for that one's config4 because I made a config3 yesterday. But you can call it anything you like. But let's go into config3 because I've already created that one. And in there you've got these options. Button map mapping, sticks, triggers and vibration. Save to slot 1, save to slot 2. It's pretty self-explanatory. You can rename it, you can copy it, and you can delete it. So, first things first, let's have a look at the button mapping. The controller button. So this is the actual button on the controller itself. If you click on that, you can scroll through all the buttons, D-pad, and then you've got your paddles, which are obviously unique to this controller. Well, unless you've got a scuff. Say, for instance, you wanted to assign a button to the left paddle, you'd click on that. And currently, the left paddle is assigned to the A button. So if you click on the left paddle, it'll do exactly the same as the A button does. If you want to change that, you can go down and you can assign it to any of those available or you can unmap it as well if you want to. So that's that. And you can do that for literally any button on there. and you can restore defaults as well obviously. And then when you're finished with it, you can click done and that'll save it. Let's go back out of there for the moment. As I say, that works for every single button on the machine, on the controller I should say. 
and it's well relatively straightforward the hardest thing for me is actually working out what button i want to have assigned to do whatever in whatever game which uh, you're going to have to play with yourself unfortunately sticks triggers and vibration this is quite interesting there's quite a lot of options in here so if i go into left stick now you've got what is it five options here and you can well this is the default and if you look at the graph on there it shows you how the movement works it's fairly simple on there it's fairly smooth then you go down you've got delay if i click on that one there you go that's it kind of yeah it kind of moves suddenly when it gets about halfway it jumps a bit more then you've got aggressive which kind of yeah it's well it's a lot more aggressive <laughs> then you've got instant now this one's an interesting one you just just touch it a little bit and it does the full control now i'm not sure what i'd use that for but there must be games where just touching it would be really useful wouldn't want to do that in a driving game though and then you've got smooth which is very similar to the default but it's just a slightly I don't know, it feels like, I'm not sure I'd feel the difference on that one, to be honest. But there are the options on there. Let's put it back to default. You get the same options on the right stick. So you can have them set independently. Then on your triggers. Now you can set up the dead zones and so on and so forth. Obviously... Uh, you've also got the little green stoppers underneath the controller itself which you can actually flick across and that will stop the triggers having very much movement at all. I'd probably use that more than this to be honest. This, I'm not sure how much I'd use this. But you know for, for your professional gamers I'm sure it'll come in handy. And we've got vibration. I don't know if you can hear that. Yeah, that vibrates as you do that. And then you've got your main. Can you hear that? I'm not sure if you can pick that up. And that's the main vibration. And then you flick across. It does it on the right as well. Now, I don't know if you can hear that. Probably not in the background. But I found that the left tends to be more powerful than the right and I think that's because when I've had a controller apart in the past and I would imagine it's the same inside this one the little round thing that spins round to create the vibration is bigger on one side than it is on the other so I don't know whether that's a fault with the controller or whether that's just the way it is in all controllers I would imagine it's probably the same in all of them um, I can't imagine this one would be any different to the controllers I've had apart in that sense slightly better made but the basic layout would be exactly the same, I would imagine. <laughs> and the same for the right trigger, so there's not much else to see there. So that's the vibration. You can change the Xbox button brightness. Now, that's full and that's off. And obviously I can't show you that working at the moment because you can't see my controller. Um, but yeah, that actually does switch off the light or you can have it halfway or, well, anywhere along that line really. And that's that. So if you want to turn that down, you can. You can swap sticks. Why you do that, I don't know. Invert right stick Y axis. Yeah, I like that. Um, I like to have my Y axis inverted. Now, on the, 360, on the 360, you used to be able to do this off the cuff, straight away. Um, I've not been able to discover if there was any way of doing it previously on the Xbox One controllers, but it's there now. So that's quite handy for me, because I always have my uh, axis inverted, and it saves you having to go in and do it for each game. You can just uh, leave it as is. You can do it with the uh, <laughs> left stick as well, though I'm not sure why you'd want to do that. You can swap triggers. Again, the only reason I would think for doing any of these would be perhaps if you're a disabled gamer. And that's, that's basically all there is to see in there.
So yeah, I think that's pretty much all there is. Obviously, as I say, I've, I've you know, discussed how you can copy and rename and so on. And there should be more of these being uploaded as time goes on. Right, so that's it. I don't think there's anything else to see. I think I've covered most of it. If there's anything that I haven't covered and you guys would like me to go through it, let me know and uh, maybe I'll do another video talking about anything that I haven't already covered. All right, I will speak to you guys again soon. Bye.